What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how we can make it seem similar to this. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. As you can see right now, I'm inside of Unreal Engine 5, and so that you guys can follow along, we will make this template available to you guys so that you guys can download it and start exactly where I'm at right here. And so as you can see in the scene, we have this pug statue, and I also have them sitting on top of this block here. You can see we have some terrain in here as well. And I kind of organized these folders over here. So I have the folder for the camera, which I brought over from Cinema 4D. I have the model folder here, which we have the statue that I designed created for us. And then I have this cube because we want to have some steps that lead up to us. And the whole reason that I have a cube there is so that we know the height that we want to have our steps correlate with. And then the last folder right here, I have starter assets. And these are all the assets that whenever you open up a brand new scene inside of Unreal Engine, this is everything that's going to be in there. But I'm going to show you guys how we can get started from scratch. Everything from lighting to creating environments, etc. So to get it started off, let's delete everything out of this scene. So everything that's inside the starter folder here, I'm just going to select the top one here, the fog, hold down the shift key, go all the way to the bottom, and I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to say yes to all, and that's going to make our scene black. And now from here, I wanna show you guys a really cool way of lighting your scene. It's called the environmental panel. So if I come over here to window and come down here to the environmental light mixture, I'm gonna click on this right here. And now you can see we have a panel that says environmental light mixture at the top, right? And so from here, it's as easy as coming in. I'm gonna create the skylight first. So I'm gonna click on that. And then this first one, create atmospheric light zero. I'm gonna click on this one. I'm not going to create another atmospheric like I'm going to skip past that and go to create sky atmosphere and then create volumetric fog, which actually let me come down to here into my viewport and I'm holding down the alt key on my keyboard, the left alt key, and I'm holding down the left mouse button just to kind of navigate around this scene. But I'm looking up into my scene because I'm going to add some volumetric clouds in here like so and boom. Now we have volumetric clouds but we still have like this weird horizon line right here. It's not filled in. And so to do that, I'm just gonna create height fog and I'm gonna exit this panel out. And now you can see we have everything as it's supposed to be. And so the reason I like lighting it this way is because if I actually hold down the shortcut key, control my keyboard and have the control key held down, holding the L key and then move around my mouse, I can actually control all the lighting in my environment at once like so. So I'm gonna hold down the control key hold down the L key and you can see it has like this little sundial that kind of showed up in my viewport here. And so I'm not going to click anything on the mouse at all. I'm just going to move my mouse and you can see that I'm actually controlling the lighting. And so this is the way that I like controlling my lighting. I'm, I'm probably going to put it somewhere around here so that I could get my scene all built out. And then I'll come back to this later once I have my scene more polished out. So the next step from here, let's actually add a ground plane in here. But not only are we going to add a ground plane, I'm going to show you guys how we can take several different textures, mix them together so that we can actually paint on our terrain here if we want to paint any other materials in here. And so to get started, where we see this cube here with the plus symbol, I'm going to left click on this and then I'm going to come down here to Quixel Bridge. And once I have this open up, I'm actually going to go to my local folder here. So if you see this one, it looks like a computer screen. I'm actually going to click this because I have some stuff already downloaded, as you can see. But feel free to go in and use any of the materials that you want for your example. But for mine, I'm actually going to use some of these mossy different grounds that we have here. So I want to use this mossy ground. I'm going to hold down control, click this mossy ground and left click this one as well. So I have all three selected in here. And then down here where it says medium quality, I'm going to go to high quality because that's the ones that I actually downloaded. And if you don't know how to download these, actually all you have to do is go to your material and down here we would have three different settings. So high quality, medium quality, and low quality. So I believe this is 8K, 4K, 2K. And so depending on the specs on your machine or what exactly you're trying to build out, make sure you download the files that are good for you. But for me, I'm going to stick with high quality here. So again, I'm going to select all three of these. And once you have everything downloaded, they will have a check mark next to them. All you have to do is come down here to where you have the add button. I'm going to click add and it's going to add it to our scene. And now I'm just going to minimize this out 
and it should have opened up a content browser which it opened up a second one here because anytime you add any type of mega scans assets into your scene it's going to automatically populate it inside of your content browser so if you don't know where the content browser is beforehand let me actually exit this out if you look down here in the lower left hand corner actually you just click this and it's going to pop up so any windows people out there it's kind of like the taskbar whenever you hover down and it automatically shows up same thing here and so i like keeping it down there just so i have maximum space of my viewport here and so let me actually click this again i'm going to come down here to this folder that it just made called mega scans and i'm going to click on surfaces so now you can see that we have all three of those surfaces that we selected in their retrospective folders here so if i double click on this you can actually see it has the material already built out and then we also have all the different textures that correlate with it and so i'm not going to get too much into it i'm just going to show you guys how we could bring these textures together to make it so that we could paint on our terrain and so in order to do that i want to click on my surface folder right here and then inside the search i'm going to type in inst just for instance and as you can see it brought up all the different materials and these are material instances that's why i typed in inst and that's going to bring these up and so this next step is very important now we want to go in the order of operation that we want to be able to paint this on so the first one we select that's going to be our main texture and then the second layer we select that's going to be the one that we can paint on second and then the third one is the one that's going to correlate with the third slot and so it will make more sense here in a minute but just make sure you select the first one that you want to be your main texture as your very first one and so i want to have this mossy ground as my first one so i'm going to select this and then I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard. And let's say I want to have this rocky ground right here be my second one. And then still holding down the control key, I'm going to select the last one right here. And now we're going to want to go back into mega scans because there's one more step that we need to take to be able to make a blend material, which will allow us to paint on the materials here. And so in order to do that, just come back up here again, where it says mega scans quicksil bridge, like so. And then down here, let me pull this up so it's easier to see. We have like this little slider icon right here. And so if I select this, this is going to bring up another window called Mega Scans. And so I'm just going to leave everything as is. If you want to make a different destination for where this is going to make your blend material, feel free to do so right here. But I'm just going to leave everything at default. I'm going to click Create Material Blend. And then I'm actually going to exit all of these out. And if I come back down here into my content browser, we should have a material blend folder, which we do right here. And so this material blend, I can actually click and drag it onto my terrain here. And as you can see, it looks extremely muddy and crazy. And that's because we have to go through and just actually tile it. Like if I actually pull back, you can start to see what the material looks like. And that's because it's not tiled. So easy fix. All we have to do is come back down here to content browser coming to my material blend i'm going to double click on this and let me pull my folder over so we can see everything better let me actually make this full screen so i can kind of go through these one by one but this is our material blend that we just have made from mega scans and so the first thing that i want to do i want to start activating all these different material blends so we have control of them in our attributes down here and so i'm just going to start here which is use base layer adjustments i'm going to turn these on so you want to turn them on on the left and you want to turn them on on the right just to make sure to activate it and then this one if you want to add like any type of petal layers and everything that's all built into this blend material as well which is really cool so i'm actually going to activate my puddle layer here as well and then right here where we have blend control i'm going to activate these as well and i'll show you what these do here in a minute but the first thing i want to do is actually right here where it says base layer i'm going to come down here to where it says base layer tiling and i'm going to click this on and this is where i'm going to be able to tile that material right so if I actually minimize this a little bit so we can see what's happening inside our viewport at the same time, let's do it like this. And I'm going to scroll back down here to tiling. So let's say we want to do like 50 by 50. So I hit 50 and then hit the tab key on my keyboard, hit 50 again. And now you can see that it's starting to tile. Let me pull in closer to my pug statue here. And it's starting to look a little bit better. You can see we have all the leaves, all the pine cones and everything. They're a little bit large for our scene. So maybe let's try to jack it up like 75 by 75. Let's see how that looks. 
and this is all non-destructive and so you could just pick something for now so like let's say i want to stick with 75 i can always go back later and change that if my scene starts to look a little bit wonky once i start to really put this together and so what i'm going to do now is actually i'm just going to paint like a path on here and so let me come down here and come down to my middle layer and i'm going to come down here to the tiling section of my middle layer and i'm just going to make this kind of add up so 75 by 75 because that's what we used before i'm going to click on save and then i'm going to come over here where it says select mode left click on this and then i want to use mesh paint so this is going to allow us to paint on side of our mesh here but before i do that i have some stuff straggling here inside my outliner i like to keep everything organized so i'm going to select all the stuff that i brought in for my lighting click this under starter assets and i'm actually going to rename this to i just name it env for environmental and then i'm going to come back down here to content drawer save all just make sure i save everything because good to save and that should be good to go so back to where we were before i'm going to come over here and i want to actually make sure i have my ground plane selected first so i want to select this then i'm going to come over here to select mode come down here to mesh paint and that's going to bring up this other window on our left hand side and this is where we can start painting stuff in so we want to go to paint right here and that's going to bring up some attributes here and if i just come and kind of scroll over my terrain you can see that we start getting these green dots and we have like a circle over top of it and what each one of these green dots is it's a vertice that's actually that we can paint on so this is kind of important too because i brought this mesh in from cinema 4d what i did was build out a ground plane made sure that it had a lot of vertices in there because if you don't have a lot of vertices your painting might not come up to par and so a good step there make a decent amount of vertices and then bring that fbx into unroll engine as i did here and so from here, I'm actually going to change out my brush size, maybe to like 0.1, actually, maybe 0.05, somewhere around there. And then my strength, I could leave up 0.5 for right now. I'll leave my fall off at one. And this is the next important step right here where it says paint color. We want our paint color to be black and our race color to be white. So right here, we're actually just going to flip this like so. And then the very last step here, this is where we have our color channels. And so the color channels will go as so. So we have our base layer right here. And then the red color channel will coordinate with the second one that we selected. And then the green one will correlate with the third one that we selected. And then the blue one, that's going to be for your puddles. And so let me make sure I have all these selected off except for my red one here. And I'm actually just going to click and drag. And now you can see that we're actually painting on our terrain. So I can actually paint this out pretty far here. And we're going to make this blend a lot nicer here in a second. But first, I just want to kind of paint some of this stuff out like so. And then let me kind of zoom in here. And you can see that it's kind of like hard edged right here. In which we could just go into the blend materials to kind of blend that out. But before I do that, maybe let's say along this edge right here. We want to kind of put in our second texture there right so i'm going to come down here to my color channels click off a of red click on green and maybe let's make this 0 0.02 for my brush size and maybe let's paint this in on the sides and you can see it's looking really really fugly right here and that's because we didn't change the tiling size on that material but i did that on purpose just so i could kind of show you guys how we could start mixing and matching and making this stuff blend so let's say that we're happy with how this looks right here. I'm going to actually go back to my select panel right there. Come back down to my content browser. Come to my blend material. And now let's get to work. So if the first thing I want to do, I kind of want to scale this down and tile it so it matches everything else. So I'm going to come down here to where I have my top layer right here. And I'm going to come down here to where it says top layer tiling. Make this 75 by 75 as well. And now you can see that I actually tiled everything in there. And so the next step from here is I want to come all the way up to the top. And where I have my blend controls, let's actually do the top layer first. So let me scroll this over a little bit just so it's easier to see. And this is where like a second monitor really comes into play. Because then you can have like this type of thing on a second monitor so we can still see a viewport. But we're going to make this work. So for my blend amount. Let's say we want to do 50 just so we can see what's happening. And so it's really engulfing everything. So from here, it's just about like picking different numbers here and seeing what works. So maybe around two. 
you can see that we're starting to really get it to blend in here let's see maybe like one 1.5 doesn't really seem to work so maybe somewhere around 1.85 same thing for my blend metal layer right here i'm going to come down let's say maybe 1.5 as well we're really only seeing the top layer here which is fine i just wanted to kind of show you guys like these blend controls and how everything works for my blend contrast i always like to go to an extreme and then kind of pull everything back just to kind of see how it's working so let's say maybe like 1.3 somewhere around there and you can really start to see where our textures are starting to blend in a lot better with our base layer here and so let's say that we're happy with how everything looks right here again this is a tutorial so i want to show you guys how we get started and everything so the next step from here maybe let's start adding some stuff into our scene like some steps and some rocks and then from there we're going to actually paint in some trees and so what i'm going to do now is actually i'm going to exit this out and we're going to come back over to Quixel Bridge. And for anybody that doesn't know what Quixel Bridge is, it's basically our way to getting into all the Mega Scans assets. And so I have a whole plethora of different tutorials on my YouTube channel. I'll link them down below. But I go further in depth into this type of stuff. But basically, like when you first open it up, you see that we have different collections here. Like if I click on this Heartland collection right here, you can see that they went and scanned a bunch of stuff in this particular area. And if you click on references, these are actually real photos kind of showing you the landscapes and everything that they kind of went through. I did a bunch of photogrammetry work and then all the assets right here will correlate with that. And so I like using the Mega Scans assets because they're quick and easy. They're pretty much just plug and play, kind of like playing around with Legos. But I would definitely say if you're not familiar with Mega Scans and Quixel Bridge, come in here and explore because you could use it for more than just Unreal. You could pretty much use it with any DCC out there. So furthermore, I'm going to come over here to where we have like this little computer monitor. And let's say I want to start with some steps that I had downloaded earlier. And once you download something from Mega Scans, it's going to save to your hard drive. And that's why I was able to pick up local assets right here. And so I'm going to start with these Japanese stairs. And this is where we want to kind of be careful because we do have nanite and then we have high quality medium quality and low quality and so depending on the specs of your machine like nanite it could kind of be a ram hog sometimes and so you want to be in particular on which you're downloading like if you have something that's going to be your hero shot definitely you want to use nanite with the ak textures but if you're going to use stuff that's going to be in the background you might want to use 4k textures or 2k textures in which that's what these are going to be here and so nanite is going to be ak high quality 4k and i believe medium would be 2k and low quality i think might be 1k but my way of getting around this is i usually download the nanite to take advantage of that technology i'm using a 2080 ti on this machine but then i'll download a high quality one as well and so that i can swap out the 4k texture if need be and so i already have these downloaded i'm actually going to click on add here and now again we see our content browser pop up and everything and if I actually come in here and let's say I look at this material right here, I'm just going to double click on it so you guys can see what I was talking about. And so you can see this material in particular is 8K, it's 8192 by 8192. Everything's already built out for us. So all we have to do is kind of click our steps right here, click and drag it into our scene. And if I come over here, I'm actually going to exit this out. If I come over here to my raw outliner, and just double click on it it's going to zoom us into that particular object and so i'm just going to come through and use my transform tools up here to kind of match it up and so right now i just have select and translate but right here is where we can scale it so i'm going to click on this and come down here to make sure everything is all yellow and then i'm just going to click and just drag like so until i get the size that i want somewhere around there and as you can see, it's snapping right now to an imaginary grid. And if you don't want that snapping on, these little boxes up here that have the blue highlights, these are going to be your enabled snapping. And you can disable these easily by just clicking on them. So I'm going to click these off. And that's going to disable all my snapping there. But those correlate with your transform tools right here. And so I like working without it transform, without it snapping, just because I like freestyling my scene here. So I'm actually going to get rid of this cube like so and now i'm just going to bring my steps in and kind of just eyeball where i wanted to have it at somewhere around here i think would be good and again this is using the 8k texture so let me show you how we can bring in the 4k textures this is just a tip that i'm going to show you guys 
if I come back here to Quixel Bridge, remember I downloaded both. And so I'm gonna go to high quality and then I'm just gonna actually add this in there and just give us a second to download. And now I brought up our content browser and now you can see we have two set of stairs in here. One will be Nanite and then the other one will be 4K. So make sure you're picking a one that is correct. And then you can see we have our other textures in here as well. And so this one right here, I believe is the 4K one. Yep, so we have 4096 by 4096. And so it actually made a material for us right here. So if you look right here, it would say 4K. If you look right here, it says 8K. So let me exit out of Quixel Bridge. Make sure I have my steps selected right there. And if I come over here to my details panel, let me drag this up so we can see it. I'm going to scroll down and right here under materials, I'm going to take this 4K material and let me zoom in so we can kind of see. It's not going to make that big of a difference. That's why I think it's smart sometimes to use a 4K material. But if I click and drag this 4K material into this material, you can say changed a little bit, but not too much, especially if we're back, we're not going to see that much of a difference. So again, that's just for saving some RAM on your computer there. If you're running in any type of issues, if your system is starting to slow down, make sure you're not using 8K materials on everything because it's not needed. So now that I showed you guys Quixel Bridge, how we can bring in different photogrammetry assets into our scene, let's get on to painting some of the trees into our scene so we can really mellow this out. And so what I'm going to use in particular is called the Mega Skins Tree Sets. But if you go to the marketplace, there's a ton of different tree packs, some free, some paid for. So feel free to use what you want. But I'm going to particularly use the Mega Skins Trees. The only caveat with that, the Mega Skins Trees, as of this recording, they're not set up for Unreal Engine 5. They're still set up for Unreal Engine 4. But there is a trick to bring those trees into Unreal Engine 5. And so I already have them set up inside of my scene right here. If I come to my content browser, if I click on this, this is black outer and these are the mega scan trees that are brought in. And let me actually go over to the Epic Games launcher so I can show you guys this inside of the marketplace. So this is the Epic Games launcher and I'm going to come over here to the marketplace down here. I'm going to type in mega scans. And it's going to be these ones right here. These are the only trees that they have with the leaves and everything as of right now. So I'm going to click on this one. And you can see it's still on early access. We have the mega skin trees, European black outers. And if you look right here where it says supported engine versions, you can see right now it's still only 4.25 to 4.27. And so I do have a tutorial, I'll link it down below. Basically, you would just create a blank project in Unreal Engine 4. You would actually add these to that project and then you can easily migrate these over to your Unreal Engine 5 scene. Again, it takes a bit of steps and so I'll just link the tutorial down below so we're not wasting any time here. But also, let me show you guys this. If you come over to free and come over to like permanently free collections and maybe let's type in trees right here on the right hand side you can see that we have a bunch of other trees here as well so we have these landscape trees we have these ones which are pretty good this um project nature pack we have a couple of down here as well so you don't only have to use the ones for making skins there's a whole bunch of stuff on the marketplace as well so i definitely say check out the marketplace and see what's on there because you never know what you're going to find so in this next step i actually want to show you one of my favorite tools i call it the bob ross tool but we can actually take a foliage paintbrush and we can paint on our trees or rocks or anything else so let me show you how to get that set up with the mega scan tree stuff that i just showed you guys and so coming down here the content drawer and then i'm going to come down here to my black outer pack and this is where i have my mega scans trees i'm going to come down here to geometry and i'm going to use simple win and i actually have again a tutorial on mega scans trees because they do go really deep we can control the wind we can control how many branches the leaves the coloring and all that good stuff but i'm just going to show you guys how we can actually paint these into our scene so that you guys can start creating on stuff in your own and so I have all these different trees in here that I have. And the next step from here, I actually need to come back up here to my select mode. And I'm going to come down here to foliage. And then I want to drag those trees into here, right here where it says drop foliage. So again, content drawer, I'm going to take these trees and I'm actually going to dock this in the layout so we can actually see it here. I need to see both of them at the same time in here. So there we go. I see my trees down here. And again, this is where a second monitor would be suffice. But let me actually take maybe this tree right here. I'm going to hold down control. Maybe this one here. And let's select these two. 
So I'm just going to select these and drag them into my foliage here. And then I'm actually going to exit out of my dock here. And then you can see right here, we actually have like this big half dome inside of our scene. So if I scroll back with my mouse wheel, hold down the alt key, left click and drag. I want to come into like kind of maybe like a top down position here. And let me guys just show you what it does by default. So if I just left click, boom, you can see we have like a ton of trees in here. They're all clumped in and everything, and it looks pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Let's be honest. So I'm going to actually hit Control Z on here, and I'm just going to control some stuff over here. So my brush size, let's bring this down to maybe like 100. You can see it made it a lot smaller here. My paint density, let's see what it looks like at 0 0.05. And I'm just going to paint this in. So we're getting some better results in here. But we can actually switch this up a little bit if I scroll down in here into my trees. And so you might be wondering how I'm actually moving around so fast. I don't think I went around this yet. And so the way to navigate stuff in Unreal Engine, if you're brand new, it's just like working with a first person shooter game. And so it's going to be your WASD on your keyboard. And so that's going to go forward, backward, left and right. And then if you hold down the Q key or the E key on my keyboard, that's going to go up and down. But in order to do this, you want to make sure you have left click on your mouse. And before I do that, I, let me actually just come back in here into select. And so I actually want to hold down the right click. Sorry about that. So if I hold down the S key, I'm going to move back. W is forward, A to the left, D to the right. And I'm hitting Q to go down and I'm hitting E to go up. This is a very fast way to kind of navigate around our scene inside our Unreal Engine. It feels very intuitive. It might feel kind of weird at first, but trust me, after you've been working with this for maybe like a day or two, this is going to feel absolutely natural. And so to get back into what I was saying before, if I scroll in here, actually zoom in here, you can see the trunk is kind of hovering right above the plane here, and we don't want that. So I'm actually going to hit Control Z, and I'm just going to come back here again come down to my foliage tool and let's come down here and change some of the attributes so i want to make sure i have all my trees selected here let me actually scroll this up a little bit so we can see better and we have some painting tools down here for a scale i actually want to offset this a little bit maybe like let's do 0.8 to 1 maximum and that's just going to change the scale of our trees there and if i come down here i'm actually going to turn off a line of normal because we do have like a rocky terrain in here so if it's aligned to normal, it's actually going to align our foliage like on the different angles and stuff. But if I turn that off, everything is just going to go flat up and down like how it would in nature. And so continuing to go down, I'm looking for this one. There we go. The Z offset. And so I actually want to maybe make this like negative 25 by negative 20. So now if I paint in here and I scroll down. You can see our trunk is actually going below the ground and that's how we want it. So our Z offset is going to determine how high it is off the top of our terrain there. And we don't want it to be floating because that's not how nature is. So you want it to be a little bit underneath the Z there and you can control it at different widths there. So I'm doing like negative 25 to negative 20. And from here, I'm actually just going to start painting some trees in. So let me pull back a little bit like so. And if you hold in the wheel button, you know, like how instead of scrolling back and forth, you can actually push it in. We can actually pan around the screen like that as well. So I'm just holding in the mouse button to pan around. And I'm just going to start painting in some of these trees here like so. There we go. So something like that should be cool. And let me actually zoom into my scene here. We can actually maybe pan down a little bit like so. Let me paint some more trees in here in the background, maybe just because we want to make this these woods look like they're like really, really thick. So we don't want to see a lot of stuff coming through the brush there and everything. So I think that should be suffice like that. And so now let me actually come over to select and I'm going to hold down the control on my keyboard, hold down the L key. That's going to bring up our sundial and we can actually start controlling our lighting and everything and making this look really cool. So usually I like adding in the trees because we get a lot of cool shadows and everything that will start to implement inside of our scene here like so. So let's say maybe something like that looks pretty cool. So we have a little bit of shadow on our statue there on our ground here and everything is looking cool. 
So the next step I want to take is actually adding a little bit of atmospheric fog in here. We have it in our scene, but let's start to control it so we get some better lighting and atmospheric effects in here. So if I come back over to my outliner, let me scroll this down and actually come over to my environmental panel. And actually before I do that, let me make another folder. So I'm just going to click on main, right click, create folder. And I'm just going to name this one mega scans. I'm going to put all my mega scan stuff in there. I only have one thing for right now, but as you start, you know, polishing out your scene, you're going to have a lot more. So I just like to keep it organized. And again, let me come down here, save all it's inside of my content browser just to be safe. And there we go. So getting back to it, I'm going to come over to exponential height fog. I'm going to left click on this, scroll my details panel up. And let's scroll down until we see volumetric fog, which is right here. So just keep scrolling down till you see this. And I'm going to click this on. And you didn't really see it in there just because we have to turn up our attributes. I saw it, but it might not show up on YouTube with the compression and stuff. So to make sure that we really see it, I'm going to come over here to fog density. Put it up to one. And now you can see that we have all of our atmospheric fog effects in full effect. And so I just kind of did it at one just to show you guys how cool this is and how much, you know, fog that we can actually get in here. But let's dial this back by a lot. So let's start with maybe like 0.5. I'm going to come in maybe like 0.3. Uh, maybe let's do 0.2. Somewhere around there. And that's starting to look really cool as well. And if you want to change the color on your fog, all you have to do is come down here to where it says volumetric fog. We have our Abito. I can left click on this and we can add some color in here as well. So let's just go to extreme so we can see. So if you want to do something stylized, you know, you can make it any color that you want. But I'm just going to add maybe just like a hint of blue. Maybe we make like a night scene or something like that as in my preview. So something like that should be suffice. So in this tutorial, I basically want to give you all the tools that you need to succeed. And so basically from here, you would just kind of polish out your scene and everything. But let me show you where we could get the camera and everything inside of our sequencer. So whenever you guys are ready to render out, you'll be good to go. So if I come down here to my content browser, I'm going to come in here. And I already said before I had everything set up. I did the camera move. Actually, I designed did the camera move inside of Cinema 4D. So I imported that camera in here. And if I come over to my animation folder right here, we have this little clipboard here. And this is going to be our timeline, aka our sequencer. So if I double click on this, this is going to bring up our sequencer right here. And if we actually click on this camera, you can see right here. It's actually going to add it into our scene in which this is our camera view. If you want to look in a full viewport of what the camera looks like, all you would have to do is activate it right here, right beside track, left click on this. And now we're actually looking through our camera. So if I click on play, you can actually see, we just have like a handheld move in here. Nothing too crazy just to give it a little bit of movement, but let me actually go back to the beginning here. We have too much X bag to height fall because like looking through your camera, looking through that lens, you can really start to see how your scene is shaping up. So it's important to go back and forth between your camera and your viewport just so you can see how things are kind of working out. And so I'm actually going to come back down here and that's kind of bothering me. So I'm just going to change the density maybe to like 0.1 like so. So something like that. And then this is how we actually see through our camera. So I wanted to show you guys that. And then another important thing, if you want to like make your own sequencer, it's as easy as coming up here to the clipboard. You would clip on this. You would add a level sequence and this is where you're going to save it at. So once you click add level sequence, it's going to ask you what you want to name it as. You would just click save and then that will open up another sequence. You can have as many in there as you want. So you can save on top of each other so that you can have multiple sequences in there. So you can render out at different angles and things like that, which is really cool. But if you're ready to render, you will actually come over here and click on add track. And then you want to add a camera cuts track because this is important as well. If you don't have a camera cuts track in here, it's not going to render. And so right here where we have camera, you want to select the camera that you want to use to render, which will be inside your sequencer. And then if you drag this out and you can actually look through this camera as well, but you're all set to go. Now that you have this in here, it's going to render everything that's inside this camera cuts. So. That's an important thing to remember too. If you don't have this camera cuts in here, it's not going to render and you want to make sure that you click save here as well.
and so before i get to rendering let me actually show you guys the post process volume and so that's going to kind of help us dial in some of the lighting here as well so if i come over here to where you have this cube with the plus sign if i click on this and i come down here to visual effects the top one right here the post process volume you want to left click on this one and let me actually bring it better into our scene here so we can see but this is where we're going to start being able to dial in our lighting you could do color correcting in here and stuff like that but before we do that you actually want to scroll down here to the very bottom so let me keep scrolling down until we see post process volume settings right here and right here where it says infinite extent unbound you want to select this because we do see a bounding box inside of here but we want to make sure that all the different attributes that we select inside our post press volume engulf the entire scene not what's just inside that volume box so it's very important to make sure you have this selected here and then from here you can come up here and let's just go through the list so i can come over here to bloom i'm gonna turn this on i'm gonna go to convolution because that gives us a little bit more realistic bloom inside of our scene there if i come down here to exposure this is another important thing in here so if i come up to exposure and i actually activate this one right here then let me actually drag this up a little bit more if i come down here to min ev 100 and max ev 100 you want to select these and these will give us better exposure within our scene because by default unreal engine tries to act as natural as possible so kind of take it as if you're standing inside of a building your eyes get adjusted to the lighting in there and then when you move outside your eyes get like really blown out and they have to adjust to the lighting of the outside unreal engine tries to replicate that and so in order to control that we're going to come right here to where it says min ev 100 Let's start with like maybe one and you can see automatically the exposure went down and I'm just going to leave these both at one. And if you ever want to like change the lighting compensation in here, you would just come right here. The way it says exposure compensation. If you click on two, you can see it's blown back out. Point one is going to kind of dim it a little bit. And so if you're finding your lighting isn't what it was before or you want to kind of change it. You can just come in here and change out your exposure compensation. So moving on, we have different stuff like chromatic apparition. I like adding a little bit of that in here. If I come up to one, let's actually, I could take it up higher. You can see it's starting to add some chromatic apparition in here, in which I like adding just a tiny bit in there, maybe like 0.1. Then if I keep coming down, you have some lens flares in here as well, which I don't have any lights in here, so we're not going to see any lens flares but the other thing that's really cool is the color grading so if i come down here you can see that we have color temperature we have white bouncing works just like a real camera and everything but if i come down here to global you see that we have different attributes for saturation contrast gamma gain so anybody that's done any type of coloring in the past you know like in adobe premiere or blackmagic resolve davinci these are the same exact tools that you would have inside of there so if you activate maybe like the contrast and then you just hit the down arrow you can see that we have our color wheel you can kind of change it out in here with rgb or hsv but i kind of just usually come in here and dial in this setting right here so maybe let's pump up like our contrast to like two something like that you can already see our scene is looking a little bit cooler if you scroll down you can also control your shadows your bit tones your highlights so you have full control over the spectrum of your coloring if you're in the color grading but if you're not you can actually come down here to miscellaneous and we do have a tab here for color LUTs. so if you go to the marketplace you can download color LUTs on there if people made their own color LUTs, you could bring them into here as well so anybody that's used to offline rendering with like redshift or octane you know that you could do LUTs in there you could do them in here as well in which i do have some from the marketplace that i'm just going to throw in here for an example so let me actually come down here to my content browser and I have this lip pack here. It's called Amplified Lip Pack. You can find it easily inside the marketplace. But let's say I want to do something maybe like popular looks. And let's say maybe like Blockbuster 1. So it's as easy as just dragging this into that little panel. Let me actually dock it so everything's easier like so. So now when I docked it, it actually made it over here. So we can still see our details panel here. So let's say Blockbuster 1. Maybe Blockbuster 2 so it's just as you know the matter of just dragging in till you find something you like something like that looks pretty cool so i'm going to leave it at that maybe let's come back up to our exposure let's bring this back up to one 
so i'm really liking something like that as well and then this again if you hold on the control l bring up the sundial and i just start dragging it around and we're not seeing it because you can see it right there but it's off screen because we're looking through our camera so this usually shows up in the viewport but i'm just dragging it around kind of mess with the lighting and everything in here as well let's say maybe something like this we're starting to see a little bit of the god rays in there which is looking cool but like i said you want to go in there and just kind of check out auto attributes you can spend all day just kind of going through them so the best thing i would suggest go in there just kind of play around and see what does what in there but moving on say that we're happy with this scene and we want to render it out let me actually go over to the scene that i pre-created just so we can see what a full scene looks like when it's rendered out so what you're currently seeing here is a scene that I built out with that same exact template that I started with. I just wanted to show you guys what a finished scene would look like. Just using the same steps that I just taught you guys right there. I put a lot of hours into this one and it's still not fully done yet. But if I just kind of drag around in here, you can see I'm using a lot of Mega Scans assets. I have the pug statue and the same exact spot. I added some lights in here. I add, and all this stuff is coming from Mega Scan. So all this stuff is stuff that you guys have access to as well. I just kind of painted out the little walkway there, as you can see as well. But the main thing I want to show you guys is how we can render it. So let's say that we're happy with this scene and everything here. If I come down here to my sequencer, I'm going to come down here to my camera cuts track and just select it. So we're looking through the actual camera. If I click on play here, you can see this is the basic camera move that we have there and everything. And again, all the steps that I showed you guys inside the tutorial here, I built out this scene exactly the way that I did that. But I just spent my time, you know, placing the stuff that exactly where I wanted it to be and added some polish to it. I'm still probably going to work on this scene a little bit more. But let me show you guys how we can render out this particular scene. And so whenever I'm happy with it, all you have to do is click on this clipboard right here. This is render this movie to video. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see that it pops up with this. It's called C40 underscore template because this is the template that we have made. And so if I click on settings right here, this is going to bring up our render settings. And so you can either render out as a JPEG, which I'm not. So I'm just going to hit delete. If I come up here to settings, you can see we have more settings. If I come down here to export, we could do BMP, EXR, a JPEG, PNG sequence, which let me actually just do a PNG. But we also have Apple ProRes as well. But I like rendering out as a sequence. If you want to bring this in the post, like After Effects or Nuke or Fusion or something like that, I would suggest the EXR just to give you a little bit more flexibility. But I kind of dialed in everything the way that I like it inside of Unreal. So I'm just going to render out a sequence here. So if I come over here to PNG, like so. And then if I look back at my settings here, I'm not going to turn any of these on, but if for some reason you wanted to add like anti-aliasing or any type of like console variables because you can actually put in some console commands here to control some stuff in your renders as well. That's another deep subject, which I'm not going to get into. If you want to do high resolution, if you're doing like high end key art and anything of that nature. And again, I do have a tutorial where I go through this stuff more in depth. So I'll link that down below and then down here. We have some multi-pass rendering stuff here as well. If you chose to do that, you could do detailed lighting. You could do a lighting pass, a reflection pass, and you can even do path tracing if you want to do offline rendering, which I'm just going to stick with real-time rendering. So from here, I'm going to come down here to output. And I'm just going to come right here to output directory. I'm going to select this and I'm just going to go to my desktop, make a new folder. And I'm just going to name this one, let's say render like so. Double click on it. And then I'm going to click on select folder down here. I'm just going to leave it at 10. No, you know what? Yeah, I'll leave it at 1920 by 1080. And then for your file format, man, you could probably change this one. I'll just name this one Puggle. And you want to make sure that you have it inside these brackets here or else it's not going to name it correctly. So you want to have your name right here inside of the bracket and then right here where it says frame numbers. I'm going to leave that as well because that's going to leave the sequence of frame numbers and sequence in there. So everything else is looking good. So I'm just going to click on accept and then right here. I'm going to click on local render and give us a few moments to warm up. And once it warms up, it's just going to speed right through it and you'll see like your calculated time and everything down here as well. So this scene is set up for 24 frames per second, about 240 frames that rendered in a little bit over a minute. For my particular system, I have a Threadripper 3 CPU AMD with a 2080 Ti NVIDIA GPU. And so I have a decent spec computer, but 
It should still run good on yours. I've used this on laptops and mid-level range computers with no problem at all. So hopefully these steps will get you guys started into creating something similar for your project. What up, what up? Wimbush here.